Hi guys, I'm LB, and this is Quantum Conundrum, which I purchased, like, years ago, like, when it came out. And I have not been able to play it until now, because I finally have a computer that is capable of playing it, and I had to mess around in the configuration files to, uh, change the graphics settings, because if you look at this, if you look at the options here in video settings, look, this is it. This is all the options it gives you. This is absolutely horrible. So you have to actually manually go in and edit video configuration files to get it to work. So hopefully there won't be any frame rate lag, but if there is, I'm sorry, I did my best. I did several test recordings to make sure it worked, but this is going to be how it is for now. So let's get started. I've always wanted to play this game. I have seen several full playthroughs of this, well only like a couple, so that was a long time ago though, so I've probably forgotten most of the puzzles. Let's, let's see how this goes. Once upon a time, that's how these things usually start, yes? A sister took pity on her brilliant, prolific, and incredible brother. She had somehow gotten it in her head that he might be lonely, or at least that's what she claims. And so, on a perfectly fine, productive Friday afternoon, the sister picked up her son from the Elwood Academy for Boys and dropped the aggravating child off on my, uh, the, the brother's doorstep. Now you, I mean, the boy, had visited Quadrangle Manor on a few occasions. Each time was complete with a grand entrance from the brother, who was in fact a professor and inventor with a profound and soaring intellect. With each visit, the inventions he exhibited became more slick and cutting edge. The boy eagerly awaited the revealing of the professor's latest contrivance, but this, the most captivating of visits, started a bit differently. Okay, here we go. Well, let's see here. If I configure the trans-dimensional velocity regulator at approximately 0 I can't move those. Seconds past Come on, let me move. Oh, you're here? I have the most incredible invention to show you this visit. Unfortunately, I'm a bit <laughs> indisposed at the moment. You don't say. If you take your luggage into the foyer, I will join you as soon as I can. <laughs> what was that? Oh, good. That should be a safety relief. Where on earth did I put that? Oh, no, 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 no! better. Now, what in the world are you doing here? Were you supposed to be here today? No matter. Well, judging from the current underwhelming amount of light in this room, we're still on backup power. My head is killing me. It seems as though I now possess a rather large epidural hematoma. A bump on the head. Do me and yourself a favor and head to the front hall. There's a way to restart the power grid. Last I remember, I was in the new technology sector, and then... I don't know. I do think the failsafe was tripped accidentally. Unfortunately, the front door will remain in lockdown until you can restore the power. That lag will happen whenever the game loads. This game has very few loading screens. It actually loads... If you head over to my hours. office over on the left, you should be able to restart the manor's power grid. I want to 
gonna explore a bit first. But yeah, this, as I was saying, this game's gonna be a bit heavy on the dialogue and story early on. But it, there will be some times for me to talk later, don't worry, I will be able to speak. Like, right, right now. Yeah, it's actually nice to be able to explore this. Now, some people don't really like this game, like, I know the Retro Replay didn't really like this, he said that it was a, a bad attempt at copying Portal. And, you know, I can kind of see that, but still, you have to admit, it's still a pretty good, decent game, at least. And, uh, I wanted to actually play it for myself. Right now, I can tell you that the jump physics are very floaty. You kind of have some decent control in the air, though. But, I think that's because this game has a lot of emphasis on platforming, and later on in the game, there's gonna be some mostly timing puzzles, which I don't really like, but we'll see what happens when things come to that. I'm glad I can land on this. Haha, I got into this area that I'm not supposed to be in. Whatever. Let's check this out. Throw that switch that there. It should be the one. Well, that wasn't as effective as I'd hoped. You'll have to reactivate the generators in each sector in order to lift the current lockdown. Just uh, take the glove in the box with you. I wish you could see my facial expression right now, as I am not pleased. What you are holding is an early prototype of the Interdimensional Ship Device, or IDS Device for short. It's one piece of my latest invention that should come in handy. Get it? You know, because it's a glove. <laughs> if you can access the generator at the back of each wing, we might be able to lift the lockdown on the rest of the house. It seems as if the breaker did unlock the blue wing. Well, I suppose you should start there first. I suppose I should. I thought the game was gonna lag there as it was loading stuff. There's something I must tell you. My latest invention has required me to make a few adjustments to the house since the last time you barged in. I mean, visited. Now, one of the topics that our family has been studying for several generations are rifts existing between various dimensions. I've been able to develop a power source that will channel enough energy into one of these dimensional rifts that it can be widened enough to travel through. These are the things from the intro, that's cool. I love this music. I actually got the game's soundtrack with uh, the season pass. And, uh, I really love this game's music. It's very, you know, science-y. The glove controls the power source, which allows you to travel to whichever dimension has rifts in the area. I like carrying objects with me. You won't have control over the ability to switch dimensions yet. Just be patient. This door is using one of my inventions, the repetitive, periodic, articulating gruy day. Or a drinking bird. Except that it's far more advanced. I love that. That's so cool. Uh, well, because your glove is an early prototype, it has a few limitations in terms of dimension accessibility and the distance it can be from a receptacle in order to function. This is such an early experiment with dimensional shifting, so I decided to have it triggered remotely with the drinking bird. Instead of operating a door, the bird will trigger a dimensional shift. There's an IDS battery in the machine that will power the dimensions. Which in this case is... Fluffy Dimension! In addition to Fluffy being embarrassingly adorable, it's also rather useful. Because everything is ten times lighter than normal. Come on, I know there's a way to do this. What's, what's the crouch keys? the heck? Control jumps? That's... that's weird. I've been using space to jump, but apparently control also jumps. 
Is there just not a way to take this with me? Aha! I got it! You just have to be standing in the right place. I wonder if Though that looks like a regular scale, it is in fact a portable kinetic mass to electricity converter. <laughs> Very small window here. Yes, I did it! I got this safe here. Ha ha! I broke the game. There's that lovely bird again. Oops, I missed. Sometimes I call him Desmond. <laughs> Something to note, since document. you're holding a version of the idea device, you, in fact, are not the you in an alternate dimension. But, uh, let me try that again. You remain constant, so no matter the dimension, your mass, shape, speed, and trying personality remain the same. I don't think I can do the same thing here. Oh, oh, I actually can. They actually want me to do it this time. Wait, did I make that jump without even needing this safe? What the heck? That's kind of odd. Yeah, I can just make this jumps without needing the safe. Odd. You should throw that IDS battery into the receptacle mounted on the wall. <laughs> wow, I am just breaking this game apart. Oops, I missed. That yeah, receptacle will idea. distribute the power source around the room, allowing you to now use your IDS device to switch dimensions at your leisure. As I mentioned, dimensional rifts in the manor are magnified by the stabilizing energy from the IDS receptacle and batteries. This game is very. This is what like enables me. you to slip between dimensions when you're wearing the IDS glove. Music, I love the music. Ah, that's Dolly. Dynamic Object Linear Ligation Interface. To you, a cloning device. I like my house just so. So I decided to add functionality to her to keep everything consistent. Oh, I'll need to tune that later. Oops, I missed again. It's kind of a bit more specific than I thought it was. use a couch instead of a safe, you know? <coughs> Wait, can I take the safe with me? I can take the safe with me! That's awesome! Did they- did they playtest this game at all? Like, really? Did they- did they ever playtest this game? These are my own particular hybrid beams of carbon dioxide and neodymium dope yttrium aluminum garnet lasers using an alternating ray configuration. Gives them an extra kick. Where did that safe go? I thought it went over here, didn't it? It didn't pop, did it? Eh, oh well. Probably broke the game anyway, so whatever. Oops, I missed that top. Come on, give me the chair. Oh, come on! What the heck? How did I manage that? I mean... Uh... Okay, well, uh... I'm gonna have to figure this out next episode, guys. Thanks for watching. I will see you tomorrow.